You know what they say, setting goals is the key to achieving great things. Having clear and vivid goals that we're passionate about can help us visualize our future and give us the motivation to work towards achieving them. So you've got the philosophical foundation and practical tips to make changes in your life. Now Jim Rohn is going to share his personal approach to setting goals that helped him achieve the changes he wanted in his own life. Exciting stuff. So here's Jim Rohn with his The Art of Goal Setting. Of all the things that changed my life for the better most quickly, it was learning how to set goals. And mastering this unique process can have a powerful effect on your life too. One morning at breakfast, shortly after I met Mr. Shelf, he asked me if he could see my current list of goals. He said, let me see your list of goals and let's go over them and talk about them. Maybe that's the best way I can help you right now. And I said, I don't have a list. He said, well, is it out in the car or at home somewhere? I said, no, sir. I don't have a list anywhere. He said, well, young man, that's where we better start. Then he added, if you don't have a list of your goals, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. And that got my attention. I said, you mean that if I had a list of goals, that would change my bank balance? He said, drastically. That day I became a student of how to set goals. And sure enough, when I learned how, my whole life changed. My income, my bank account, my personality, my lifestyle, my accomplishments. So I'd like to share with you the best I have learned and practiced on goal setting. First of all, I'd like to say that we are all affected by five factors. The first is environment. The second is events. The third is knowledge. The fourth is results. And the fifth and often overlooked factor that affects our lives is our view of the future. Our dreams. I won't get into all of these influences here, but let me concentrate on the fifth one. Dreams. Of all these five influences, make sure your dreams are the greatest influence on your daily decisions and activities. Put another way, make sure that the greatest pull on you is the pull of the future. For your dreams to greatly influence you, for the future to pull you, your future must be well planned. There are two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension, the other with anticipation. Guess how many people face the future with apprehension? Why? They don't have it well designed. And without really thinking about it, they have probably bought someone else's view of how to live. You will face the future with anticipation when you have planned a future you can get excited about. When you have designed your future results in advance. In this way, the future will capture your imagination. It will exert an enormous influence on you. And to design your future, you must have goals. Well-defined goals are like a magnet. They pull you in their direction. And the better you have defined them, the better you have described them, the harder you work on them, the stronger they pull. And they pull you through all kinds of difficulties too. Without goals, it is easy to let life deteriorate to the point where you're just making a living. It is not difficult to get trapped by economic necessity and settle for existence rather than substance. We all have a choice. We can either make a living or design a life. Mr. Shove said to me, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indicator of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you have plenty of talent and ability and that you're much smarter than your bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. My question to him was, then why isn't my bank balance bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reasons for accomplishing great things. If you had enough reasons, you could do incredible things. You have enough intelligence but not enough reasons. That's the key. If you had enough reasons. In my years of study, I've also discovered this. Reasons come first 
and answers come second. Life has a strange way of hiding all the answers and disclosing them only to people who have been inspired to look for them, who have reasons to look for them. Put another way, when you know what you want and you want it badly enough, you will find ways to get it. The answers, the methods, the solutions will become evident to you. Hey, what if you had to be rich? Are there any books and tapes on the subject? The answer is yes. There are plenty of good ones. But if you don't have to be rich, you probably won't read the books or listen to the tapes. What drives us to find the answers is necessity. So work on your reasons first, answer second. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? It varies from person to person. I'm sure that if you did a little soul searching, you could come up with a fairly strong list of reasons why you want to accomplish great things. There are personal reasons, sometimes uniquely personal reasons. Some people do well for the recognition. Some do well because of the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. That's one of the best reasons. I have some millionaire friends who keep working 10 to 12 hours a day making more millions. And it's not because they need the money. It's because of the joy, pleasure, and satisfaction that come to them from being constant winners. To them, money is not their main drive. It's not the money. It's the journey. Once in a while, someone says to me, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. Hey, that's probably why the good Lord sees to it that he doesn't get his million. Because he'd just quit. Family is another reason or motivator for doing well. Some people do extremely well because of other people. And that's a powerful reason. Sometimes we will do things for someone else that we would not do for ourselves. We are made that way. I met a man who once said to me, Mr. Rohn, to do everything I want to do around the world with my family, I need at least a quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible. Could a man's family affect him that much? And the answer is, of course. How fortunate are the people who find themselves greatly affected by someone else? It's powerful. Benevolence. The desire to share can be a powerful reason for wanting to achieve. Some people do extremely well gathering up resources so they can then be benefactors. When Andrew Carnegie, the great steel magnet, died, his desk was opened and in one of the desk drawers was found a slip of paper. On that slip of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life and he wrote it when he was in his 20s. On that slip of paper, he had written... I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. That's terrific. He was so inspired by that goal that during the first half of his life, he accumulated $450 million. And during the last half of his life, he gave it all away. How powerful. What has you turned on? What has you getting up early, hitting it hard all day and staying up late? What has you inspired? Next question. What's got you turned off? When I found the answers to those two questions, my life exploded into change. I finally found out what negative philosophy of life I had allowed to limit me and had me turned off. And I got that cured. Then I found a long enough list of reasons to turn me on. And once the lights went on for me, at age 25, they have never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times. But I've never lost that drive to do something unique with my life. Here's how simple now goal setting is. It's not mysterious. You don't have to anchor, you don't have to focus, you don't have to visualize, none of that stuff. Here's how simple goal setting is, change my life. Decide what you want and write it down. I mean, that's how profound this stuff is. Decide what you want 
and write it down. Make a list. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to see? What do you want to be? What do you want to have? What do you want to share? What projects would you like to support? What would you like to be known for? What skills would you like to learn? Some extraordinary things you'd like to do, ordinary things you'd like to do, right? Silly little things you'd like to do, very important things you'd like to do. Decide, decide on all that stuff and write it down, write it down, write it down. That's how simple this stuff is. And it's your own private list. If it's really private, you know, on your list, put some stuff in code where nobody can understand it if this list <laughs> fell into unfriendly hands. Okay. And simple things, whatever. Foolish things, doesn't matter. It's your list. I had a little revenge on my first list. Budget finance, who used to harass me. I got two or three payments behind this one guy called incessantly. Said, we're going to come get your car, drag it rear end up down the street in front of your neighbors. <laughs> Put me down something fierce. When I met Shof, got my life straightened out, one of the first things on one of my lists was budget finance. <laughs> and when I finally got the money, I needed a little drama in my life. Finally got the money to pay them off. I put it in small bills in a big briefcase. <laughs> Walked into the budget finance office on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. The guy who harassed me so often, his desk was about three back. I opened the door, walked in right up to his desk, stood right in front of him, never said a word. He said, well, what are you doing here? Didn't say a word. I opened up this briefcase, dumped this pile of money all over his desk. I said, count it. It's all there. I'll never be back. Turned around, walked out, slammed the door. Now that might not be noble, but you got to try it at least one time. <laughs> Pay off with a little drama. got to check them off my list. Keep your list with you. I keep my list in my journal so that I can go back. Five years ago, here was my list. And I'm a little embarrassed. Here's what I thought was so important now. How my philosophy has changed from 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago. Here's my old list. Here's my new list. Here's what's valuable to me now. Here's what I want my life to be now. Here's where I want to go, what I want to do, what I want to see. Keep your lists of goals so that it shows your growth, shows your ability to change and grow. Your philosophy grows and expands what's valuable. Setting goals. It doesn't matter how small, foolish it is. Put it on your list. My Japanese friend, Toro Ikeda, put on his first list, a Caucasian gardener. Good morning. <laughs> I thought that was good. like that. Have you got this profound thing now on setting goals? Here's how profound it is. Decide what you want and write it down. Get together with your wife, decide. Get together with your kids, decide. Get together with your business colleagues, decide. Write it down. Make a list. Okay, that's how easy it is. Now let me give you one more scenario on setting goals. When I started making my first list, Mr. Shove said, Mr. Rohn, looks like we're going to be together for a while. He said, I've got a suggestion for you. He said, I think one of the first goals you ought to set, you're a 25-year-old American male. Sure, you've made some mistakes, but now you're on the road to better things. You got a family worth it. Reasons makes the difference. And he said, you've got every reason to do this. He said, why don't you, among all the goals you're going to set, said, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? A millionaire. This is America. All the possibilities are available. Why don't you set a goal? Eh? To become a millionaire. So it's got a nice ring to it. Millionaire. Enough zeros to impress your accountant. Millionaire. And he said, here's why. Now I thought, the man doesn't need to teach me why. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great to have a million dollars? He said, no, that's not it. Here's why. And I had one of the greatest lessons I ever learned, and I'm about to share it with you. This will be worth the price of being here today if you can capture what I'm about to share with you. Here's what Mr. Schultz said. Set a goal to become a millionaire. And he said, here's why. For what it will make of you to achieve it. And I got one of the greatest classes in one sentence I've ever received in my life. That a goal that'll make you stretch that far. 
for what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all-encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future. What for? To see what it will make of you to achieve it. And here's why. The greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. Major question to ask on the job is not, what am I getting here? That's not the major question. The major question to ask is, what am I becoming here? It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. So Shelf said, set a goal to become a millionaire for what it will make of you to achieve it. Let me give you the key phrase on setting goals. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. Always keep that in mind. What will this make of me? If I set this goal and go for it, not only will I achieve it, but what will it make of me in the process? What a whole new concept on setting goals. Now, there's two parts to this, and then we're wrapping up goals. Here's the first part now on this goal setting for what you become. Number one, don't set your goals too low. Interesting, we teach in leadership. Don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure's on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. I belong to a small group. We do business around the world. You cannot believe the expectations at that level. What we expect of each other in terms of excellence. Far beyond average. Why? so that we can each grow, so that we can receive from the group, we can contribute to the group, something unprecedented. It's called living at the summit. Go where the demands are high. Go where the expectations are strong, so that it'll provoke you, push you urgently, insist that you not remain the same for the next couple of years, the next five years, that you'll grow and change. So don't set your goals too low. The guy says, well, I don't need much. Well, then you don't need to become much. (laughs) Now, here's the last part on setting goals. Don't compromise. Don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd have known how much it was going to cost me, I never would have paid, but I didn't know. Don't sell out. Ancient phrase says, count the cost, count the cost, count the cost. An ancient story says, Judas got the money. You say, well, that's a success story. No, no. (laughs) It's true, 30 pieces of silver in those days was a sizable fortune. You say, well, if a guy's got a fortune, right, that's a success story. No, you don't understand. His name was Judas. Doesn't that ring a bell? (laughs) Judas. You say, oh, yes, Judas, Judas, the traitor. That's right. The traitor got the money. Doesn't that change the story? And the answer is, of course, it changes the story. Interestingly enough, after Judas gets the money from becoming a traitor, he's got the money in his hot little hand, and now he's unhappy. Somebody says, well, if you had a fortune, how could you be unhappy? Well, he wasn't unhappy with the money. He was unhappy with himself. Key phrase, the greatest source of unhappiness is self-unhappiness. The greatest source of unhappiness doesn't come from outside. The greatest source of unhappiness comes from inside. And here's where the erosion starts, doing a little less than you could. That's where the beginning little infection of unhappiness starts, doing a little less than you can, not feeling that good about yourself. So don't let that happen. Judas is unhappy. He says, what will I do? He says, oh, I'll just take the money back. Walked in where he got the money and said, here, take this money. I'm unhappy. They said, heck with you, Judas. We got what we wanted. You got what you wanted. Out. They threw him out with his money. Judas says, well, what will I do now? He says, oh, clever. Should have thought of this first. I'll just throw the money away. And he proceeded to throw his fortune away. Why would he throw his fortune away? He was so unhappy with himself. And that's not even the end of the scenario. After he threw his fortune away, he couldn't change what he became, a traitor. 
And now in total abject frustration, he goes out and hangs his worthless self. Why such a tragic end? Because he was so unhappy with himself. He sold out. He sold out. He paid too big a price. Ancient script sums it all up and said, what if you gained the whole world and it cost you your soul too big a price to pay if you got the whole world? Don't sell out. Don't compromise your values. Don't compromise your virtues. Don't compromise your philosophy. Keep. Here's the key word, beware. If Judas could speak back, he'd probably say beware. Two good words from ancient script. One, behold the positive word. Behold the possibilities. Behold the opportunity. Behold the drama. Behold the awesomeness. Behold the uniqueness. Behold the majesty. Behold, behold. What a good word. But here's the other word. Beware. 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 Don't sell out. 